I think I'm a very open person, smiling person. I work in my spare time and I go to school. And I like to play basketball and listen to music. I like to explore different cultures, uh, countries. I do a lot of, like sports. I'm not particularly good at it, but I like it. So you want to make a local history project of your own? We'll get you started. My local history project is about exclusion and inclusion. Who were the victims and what was the result of this event? The victims of the National Socialism was mainly the Jews. Um, but also the disabled people, like in general, uh, the minorities. Especially like how they treated Jews and how they pursued Jews. Step one. It's time to do some research. Without research, we have no project. We started with discussing what we know about this subject. We wrote it down on a piece of paper in small groups and then discussed it with the rest of the class. I think if you have to start a project of your own, it's obviously important to do your research. You need to understand the history behind it and the context before you can dig deeper into it. So you need a large basis uh, you can build upon. After that, we saw a movie called Die Welle, where the concept of the movie was to show how easy it is to create a dictatorship. The movie had a great message and told us what can happen if a person gets excluded. Step two, it's so important to go on field trips. I hope you packed your bags. We traveled all the way out to the Western Sea to visit the SBI Museum. The purpose of this trip was to broaden our understanding of National Socialist ideology, which we did by having an expert educators using a presentation as well as a documentary. We learned about Nazi propaganda methods and had to interpret a poster from a magazine as well as discuss if different people were truly responsible for the murders of innocents. After our visit to the museum, we traveled to Faufel Kraulund Cemetery, where allied and enemy soldiers of Denmark were buried in the same ground. Arthur Price was a tail gunner on a Royal Air Force Lancaster bomber plane. In April 1944, Arthur Price and the rest of the crew set out to bomb a German seaport by the Baltic Sea. Here we discovered the stories of these fallen soldiers and learned about the importance of a soldier's burial. It is important to visit places similar to Gravland to get an emotional connection to the project and to really understand that these people were actually people with their own stories. The best part about this project was the like, tours outside of the school we did, like visiting museums, uh, graveyards, stuff like that. And really uh, it, gave a it had a bigger impact on, on us. Later on in the project we took a bus ride out to Oxford Flucht Museum which is a museum about refugees, built on the largest refugee camp in Danish history. Here we were assigned into groups of four, each group given a fictional story from when the camp was still active. Each story came in a suitcase, each person with a need and a way to help another group. While on the tour, we learned the history of the refugee camp as well as the living conditions of the people living there. What I will re recommend is to like follow a one person through their history or something like that, so you have a, a emotional connection with somebody. We also visited the museum's main attraction, which aims to tell the story of refugees from all over the world. My highlight was the field trip to uh, the museum Flucht. Inside the museum where you got to see refugees from all over the world, uh, where you, know, you got to learn their history. Uh, I thought that was very special. Step three, to learn or not to learn. We learned by having an expert out who had worked with the topic Holocaust for more than 50 years. The expert talked a lot about concentration camps and how it affected the soldiers by living there. In general, he informed us about different tragedies and special episodes that have been incurred under the Holocaust. After our presentation with the expert, we met on Zoom with students from Slovakia who were also doing this project. We talked to them about the difference between our cultures 
and the purpose of our projects. The, the biggest highlight was talking to the different students from other countries uh, when we were in a Zoom meeting with uh, people from Slovakia. It was just uh, nice to uh, yeah, see other people in this project who also is learning about the same things but in different ways. Step four, mirror, mirror on the wall. Have we learned anything at all? It's time to evaluate your completed activities. Through our project, we have learned about the tragedies of World War II. We learned of the horrible things done to the victims of National Socialist, as well as their ideology and their beliefs. We also learned about refugees in general and harsh living conditions they have to endure on a day-to-day -day basis. Step 5. Now it's time for you to educate the world. You need to show the world what you've learned. We're doing it right now by making a podcast where we are talking about different subjects under the main topic, inclusion and exclusion. You can also do it in many other ways, like making a movie or making a map.